doing? Kate, that represents all of the trainee bricklayers in Britain. Okay. How many of those do you think are women? Mm, Tell me when to stop. Round about here. Unfortunately, it's so few that it's almost immeasurable on this tape measure. No way, I was way off. Yep. We've got someone here today that is looking to change all of that and we're going to be talking to him on The Lucas Show. Hello and welcome to The Lucas Show with me, Kate McIntyre. And me, Danny Lucas. Now, as you all know from watching a few shows already, The Lucas Show really does tackle all the hot topics, doesn't it, Danny? And makes the construction industry more accessible and attractive to everyone. And certainly, one of the topics of the moment is the skills shortage, which I know is very close to your heart, Danny, here at Lucas. It really is, Kate, yeah. Something we've put a lot of effort yeah. into over the last five or six years now. So what's the problem and what are you guys doing? Well, obviously there's a big disconnect we found uh, working with sort of, um, if you like, the education sector and the industry. It's something that a lot of people are aware of. And what we want to do is we want to get more awareness out as, a, as an employer of what the industry can offer and mm -hmm. show the great place it is to work. So um, we've been doing some things on what we call the Lucas College Programme. Um, and that's led us into the show here that we're now promoting. Uh -huh. Um, and, you know, we've got some fantastic ideas about how we can really get a great message out. Brilliant. And of course, never one just to sit back and wait for it to happen. I know you've gone all the way to the top and you've even sort of tackled the government on this a little bit. Yeah, I've gone straight in. I've written to Sarah Bill of CITB and made it very clear that I'm not feeling at the moment that we've got the right system in place for mm -hmm. companies like ourselves. We're the guys that are actually employing these people to do the work. So it's really important, uh, important at what we call tier two level. So I've gone straight in there. Uh, and also to Anne Milton, the skills minister. I've written to her a number of times and I'm still pushing them both very hard to get the right solution for our industry. But in the meantime, not stopping and still marching on with our own agenda really yeah. to make a change. Yeah. Well, I hope they're both watching the show today. <laughs> I really hope they are actually. Yeah, and, and getting great, the message. Yeah, yeah, it's a great way of getting a a good message out, so um, I really do hope they yeah. are. Yeah, well someone else who's also on the front line at tackling the skills shortage head on is Christian Hatherall Good, who we're welcoming to the studio now, who is one of the Brickworks tutors at Brooklands College. Hi, Christian. Hi, and nice to come here today. How are you? I'm Christian. great. This is uh, very important for me as well, you know, we need more people in the industry and there is a shortage of, you know, tradespeople uh -huh. and ageing workforce. We need more people coming in in all different trades of construction to, to fill the gap and because of the industries growing even more as well. So why do you think there's such a shortage now? What are the, the key reasons I for that? I think one of the main reasons is it's not cool. Construction's not a cool thing to be in. You know, it's very promotion of A-levels, university, IT, you know, and I think construction is a great career to get into. And I think it's also not been pushed enough by the government and by CITB and other training initiatives that you know, to actually go into schools and get in and capture stu uh, students and early at like year 9, 10, 11, get them excited about construction. Mm -hmm. So when they, you know, they want to come to college and be bricklayers, you know, electricians, plumbers, carpenters, you know, work in the built environment to be project managers and all, all aspects of construction, I think, yeah. really. Yeah, there's so much that people don't see. Yeah. I mean, Danny, for you back in the day, was it quite common for you and, and your friends just to get in at the grassroots level of construction? Was that quite an appealing industry there? Well, I think what's happened is that you either wanted to go and work, which is what I chose to do, and a mm -hmm. lot of people were leaving school and doing things on the YTS, Youth Training Scheme, for instance, back in the 80s. Yeah. And it was almost like those that wanted to do the further education were going on to be doctors or lawyers or whatever. But today it's like universities for everybody, A-levels are for everybody, uh, and IT and all these other mm -hmm. things. And it's killed construction. So we've lost how we promote that. Um, and unfortunately what we found, as Christian's mentioned, about getting the year nines, etc., is a lot of the schools have no knowledge whatsoever about what we do. And it's almost a last resort. It's often... Yeah. put forward as, well, you could always go into building if you're to not very totally, academic. Totally, But yeah. actually, it's the wrong message because it doesn't portray the right picture of our and industry. There, and there, and there's, there's courses in construction for everyone, you know, and stepping stone courses into construction and continuing doing your GCSEs in English and Maths right through to academic construction courses as well. So it's a bit like a ladder. There's, you know, mm. there's steps on the ladders where you get on and get off of that ladder. 
there's, there's something yeah. for everyone. So there's a real career path to follow yeah. then, absolutely. Mm. So just thinking now, I mean, obviously in the news every day at the moment, the B word, Brexit. Yeah. I mean, what effect do you think that's going to have on construction? Again, potentially if you know, we have a lot of Eastern European workforce over here, which is great. But I think you know, if, if things don't go and they go back, we're going to be even more in need of these young people to fill their spaces along with already the gap that we have. Mm -hmm. So it's only going to potentially get bigger if we don't address this right now. And yeah. I think starting with the trades is really key. Um, we all forget that. A lot of people talk about coming into construction more at a sort of graduate level where they're learning yeah. the engineering side. And don't get me wrong, we need that as well. And I know that there's areas where there's shortages on that side of things. But the old days were about the finishing foreman and the guys on site that mm. had been the bricky, been the chippy, that had come through and understand that the whole building process. And I think going back to the roots of the trades yeah. is the first rung of the ladder in, in construction. Yeah. And we, we, need a, we need a lot of people to fill that area. And, and of course, what Christian's doing mm. is amazing, to be honest. Yeah. And we hope what we're doing is going to start a new traction. So Christian, tell us a little bit more then about your role at the college. Well, I, like I said, I'm also a brickwork tutor and also now head of curriculum, so I run the whole of construction. I'm very passionate that I mm. promote all aspects of construction at Brooklyn's College. Um, I was also made a UK Construction Week role model, which I go into schools and do stuff on social media and like here today, promoting yeah. construction. Uh -huh. So yeah, we, we at Brooklyn's College, they're very passionate about construction and the way we've grown over the years and to promote it to the local area. Yeah, the reputation is, of the mm. college is absolutely amazing, to be honest. It's, it's like they talk about Harvard in America. It's like Brooklyn's for construction. Yeah, and it's, your it's, reputation as well as a tutor. Yeah. So how did you get into being a tutor then? Uh, I, well, I said, well, I had my own small business and then just through circumstances, I saw a bricklaying job advertised and it said training, teacher training provided. Uh, applied for it and uh, yeah, got the job. I've also done, like I said, my certificate of education qualification uh -huh. alongside this in the evenings. And uh, yeah, it's just, it snowballed really. Yeah. So of course you started off as a bricklayer. Yeah, I did. I did. I did three years being an apprentice at Swindon College. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, represented them in competitions and different things. And then moved up to Guildford. And now, yeah, now, as they say, it's, I'm here and well, it's doing things like this. champion of the trade, that yeah. passion as well that you can tell there with Christian's uh, real drive for the for the trade itself, which is brilliant. So how do you think you're going to manage to shape those perceptions, change those perceptions uh, of, I mean, I of think, people today? I think what we do is show that it's not a job that you drop into just because mm -hmm. you've not necessarily got the GCSEs you want. Um, also showing, we teach, try to teach the whole perspective, not just the skill, but also like the manners, how you conduct yourself, how you present yourself. You know, we have student, all our students have like sponsored polo shirts on. They're representing the college, the department, you know the sponsors as well, and yeah, they they are you know it's, they're a whole make the whole package. yeah it's teamwork it's yeah. making them feel yeah. part of a yeah. brand part of yeah. a, a whole mm. movement really yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they are something special and they are going you know going forward into a career that you know the two or three years training will shape their next forty yeah. years or give them a foothold in the you know, foot for the door mm. to carry on progressing through the next sort of 40 years of their working career. So oh, very much a, work ethic at the ground yeah, of it. Yeah, it's is, a fantastic start. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Danny, actually knowing that Christian was coming onto the show, I decided to head down to Brooklyn's College myself and check out exactly what goes on there. And I was super impressed. Take a look at this. I've come down to Brooklyn's College here in Weybridge to catch up with Christian and a couple of his students and find out exactly what goes on down here. Oh, I don't know, it looks a bit wonky to me from over there, Christian. Yeah, spot on as always. <laughs> I'd hope so. I'd be worried if it wasn't spot on down here at Brooklyn's College. Yeah, so welcome to the Brickwork Department. I know, thank you for having me. This looks very impressive. Yeah. So before we have a little tour in here, just tell me about what goes on down here with your courses. Yeah, so we're currently in the level three area, but we start right at low level. We teach multi-tray with a little bit of brickwork, level one, two and three and apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. And then they, yeah, if they get reached all the way, they then end up in here in the level three area. So this is almost like the Hall of Fame for the star brickwork stars of the future. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is where they learn the final bits of their trade, the real high-end brickwork. Uh -huh. So we're not talking skill. like boring old little garden walls here, we're talking some in impressive structures. Yeah. So talk me through this arch first of all, so, this looks great. Yeah, so we've got a semicircular arch here built on two spiral piers, mm -hmm. um, which is very technical. We've now got another spiral pier over here, which is a really nice example. So uh, that's this one here. Yeah, very nice, crisp, clean, very uniform stepping of the curve. We've got a basket weave panel over here, which looks like it knits in and out. 
And this is a work in progress. They've obviously gone on a tea break, but they do, don't they, yeah. these brickies? Yeah, so this here is a competition wall, and this is one from a previous year, so just to give them an idea of what they yeah. expect, to give them so they're confident in what they're doing. So you mentioned competitions yep. over there, and I can't help but notice these massive trophies. Look at these. I mean, yeah. they're going to rock the mantelpiece, aren't they? Who, yeah. who won these? So George Berg, MVQ2 apprentice, and he won the junior category of the London Region and Guild of Bricklayers competition. Uh, Luke Neville, MVQ3 apprentice, won that in six hours. Wow. And so both of these students will be taking part with me tomorrow, and we're travelling today up to Liverpool College to the Guild of Bricklayers national final. This is pretty impressive stuff, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So this are you is, excited? I am very excited, very nervous. How confident are I am, you? I'm, I'm very confident because they, I've taught them well and I believe in them. Yeah, brilliant, yeah. fantastic. Well, please pass on our best wishes Will to do. them when you get fingers, up there. Fingers crossed. Yes, I can't wait to find out how they get on, although I'm sure they'll do brilliantly. They will, they will give it 100% at least. Of course they will. Well, while you head up there, I think maybe could I check out the workshop yeah as I said there's a couple of girls in there working yeah and maybe uh, yeah. learn a few skills yeah. myself yeah I might not be at competition level but you never know you never know brilliant all right somewhere. good luck thanks Christian right. Bye. thank you now I know I'm about to interrupt Charlotte and Naomi here in the middle of their creation guys it's looking good thank you, thank you. how's it going all right well uh, yeah not bad uh, just taking it bit by bit at the minute. Now, I know you're in the middle of this lovely curved wall, but you're also in the middle of your course here at yeah. Brooklyn. So how's it going so far? Are you enjoying it? Um, yeah, I love it. Uh, every time I come in, it's a new experience, learning new things. Uh -huh. um, love being mixed up as well with like boys and girls. It's a new experience. So, Naomi, what did your friends and family think when you told them you were going to come and do the course? Uh, they thought it was a bit odd because it's a men's industry and it's quite fun, actually, because all the guys look at you thinking, oh, what are you doing in here? She can't do it, but we actually can and we just prove them wrong. You obviously love it, I can see that, but yeah. what are the best bits about doing this? In my opinion, to come to work or come to college, um, do your work and then at the end of the day being able to look back on it and having the self-satisfaction and thinking I've done that I've made that and that's gonna be here for a hundred years plus both of us even got put through for a competition in March fantastic what um, was that then because I know I've already been talking to Christian about trophies and competitions <laughs> so you guys do a lot here yeah which one were you entered into? Um, we was both entered into the all-female Brooklyn uh, Guild in the UK just for girls yeah uh, all-female love it um, Naomi came first, I came second. Well, let's get this girl power going right here now because this looks complicated, but I reckon, Charlotte, you can give me a, a high-speed crash course into how a, to lay a brick. Yeah, that's yeah? fine. Okay, right, let's do so it. So, first of all, take your trowel. Take my trowel. Um, just work with the mark, just get a little bit on your trowel, so just cut it away. Lovely. And then, once you've got some on your trowel, yeah. just bring it over here. Um, just try put it on this section here. Don't overthink it yet. Pick up a half brick. Uh, half yep. brick yeah. And then, so the side which is going to be touching this side, so that's going to be outwards. Yeah. It's going to sit like that. You need to butter this side. A bit of that on there. <laughs> yep. So down the sides. Each side like you've done that. So, yeah, that. like that. Just push it on there. In there. See? It's what do you think? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good actually. Mark's out of 10, Naomi. 10. Ten. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I might be in the competition with you guys next time. No, that's we'll brilliant. See you there next year. Thank you very much. We'll crack on. I mean, if I stay here talking much longer, this wall's going to be at the height of the lens. <laughs> so I shall get, let you uh, get back to it. Thanks, guys. That's no problem. You're All welcome. All right. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. So, what did you think of my skills, Christian? Very good. Very good. See, it just shows that it's equal to boys, you know, females and males, boys and girls. It's, uh, it's just you know, how you apply yourself, listen and learn, and you know, it can be done yeah. bricklaying, carpentry, electrical, plumbing. Well, I've got a brick pier in my back garden, actually, that does need building, and Kate, if you're free at a weekend, I'll definitely have you Well, to what can I say? I mean, I was a natural. I might have to bring um, Charlotte and Naomi with me to help, if that's all right, but yeah, of course, of course I can do that. <laughs> and I'll that. paint it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect team, the perfect team. I, I don't think I'm quite at, uh, at that standard yet, but anyway, never mind my bricklaying skills. How did the competition go, more uh, importantly? Competition was fantastic up at Liverpool College. You had the best 10 juniors and seniors from all the regional heats around the UK, uh, the winners, and there was fantastic skills on show, you know, ranging from sort of 17, 18, 19 year olds 
some of the work they produced was absolutely amazing and uh, my two students gave 100% and George Berg came third in the juniors, the uh, top three position and Luke narrowly missed out and came fourth in the seniors. Still amazing, oh, yeah. national, amazing, Incredible. third and fourth position. Yeah. Yeah. Not to be sniffed at at all. No. That was brilliant. No. You guys really, really do chuffed. so well at competitions. You must be in really inspiring everybody. It is. It's inspiring them. You know, and again, it's inspiring them in the workshop to build something. And a bit like what Charlotte mm. said, you know, you stand back in the workshop, get them to take photos of it, be proud, just put it on social media, show Nan and Grandad, Mum and Dad, mm -hmm. you know, friends of what they've built, and they can see the progress. As well as like you know, when they do it for real as apprentices, they it can be there and outlive them. Yeah, I think that's the satisfying thing about construction is that we're producing something, and actually able to look at a finished product, mm. and we're all yeah. part of that process. Yes. And there's no more greater feeling than doing it with your hands. Yeah, and actually producing something, and I think that's why the trades are so important. Mm. So it's absolutely brilliant yeah. to not only see the brickwork side of it, but to see girls in construction as well and that they actually love what they do. And, and they, they've done fantastic. You know, Naomi's now working on site and she's in her second year. Charlotte only started in September. Yeah. And you know, to finish first and second in that competition, I mean, they saw this on ITV News. They were like, you know, they were over the moon. Brilliant. Incredible. So talking about that competition in particular, so obviously it was all, all female. Yeah. So how many women would you say roughly there are in the brickworks industry? Uh, I say in co training at the moment, yeah. I say there's under 20. Um, wow. Around the UK, I know of several. You know, at least another Under twenty. Half. Yeah, wow. still pretty low, isn't yeah. it? Very um, low. And I know that there are uh, several bricklayers. You know, female bricklayers actually out there doing it for real. I don't exactly know numbers, mm -hmm. but low, very low. But yeah. especially now with a lot of commercial work and high-end brickwork, you know, the, you know, it's not great being necessary to heavy materials now. It's it's absolutely equal to both. Yeah, there, there could easily be a lot more bricklayers out there. You know, and especially paperwork side and the knowledge side, the girls are exceptionally good at that as well. Well, mm -hmm. I think health statements. and safety has meant that the way that we handle materials, you've got manual handling, mm -hmm. risk assessments, yeah. personal, personal protective equipment, etc. It's made it available for everybody. It's not like the old days that we always thought about. Yeah. Um, things are a lot more equal now where everybody can have uh, an input and do the manual trades. And mm. I think that the articulation that the women bring to the brickwork yeah. side is quite impressive. It's... You know, it's a very decorative trade, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and again, especially some of the, like you said, the decorative brickwork yeah. takes a lot of skill and just neatness yeah. and that deft touch and, yeah. you know, they are good at that. Oh, we're very yeah. good at that. Yeah. We're very good at that indeed, <laughs> yeah. I mean, talking about the competitions again, I know, you know, if someone's got a hobby or they're into sport, you think, oh yeah, there'll be competitions for that. But bricklaying, I never imagined there would be bricklaying competitions. I mean, mm. there's a whole circuit going on, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, I mean, I, when I was at college, I represented uh, the Guild of Bricklayers competition and represented for Swindon College, and I knew about that one, but there's also a, come, another one based on Go Construct called Skill Build, which is for all the trades. Mm -hmm. um, again, that's you know, a national... Which is part of CITB Go yeah, Construct. Yeah, and this, this is a national competition that, that goes on, and then there's, like I think, 10 regional heats this year. Uh, we took part in Brighton two Tuesdays ago with three students. Um, and then they all go, then the highest scores get chosen, the eight highest scores, and they go to the skill show at the NEC and take part in the, guild, in the uh, Skill Build National Final. Mm -hmm. So a whole schedule school. of things yeah. planned. Completely, the and the there's some you can go to other countries as well. Yeah, then you? it goes on the, the top three winners of each category in the construction, then get picked to have coaching, they're part of the UK squad, and they go whittled down to one. That goes then they go to the world skills which this august is in kazan in russia wow and look at that i mean if that's not going to start to entice her. people in yeah. Yeah. you know it's quite it's quite amazing i don't know what the, it you know, is. where you where you can go to yeah. uh, and do you think having these competitions then is is good and that it, it inspires students and it oh, gives I, them something I, to aim I think, for i think competitions are fantastic it raises the standards you know, it's good to have like slight competition. You know, they want to hone their skills the mm -hmm. best they can, so then they can use them in these competitions. They're time-bound competitions, so it brings like the work side into it. You have to have a certain amount done in a certain time. Yeah, it's all marked, so it has to be like to industrial standards as well. So it's a win-win taking part in competitions. You know, it's great for your CV, certificates, trophies, tools you win. Mm. You know, you represent potentially your company if you're an apprentice and your college, your tutor. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. What do you think, Danny? Is yeah, good... I mean, I'm just thinking about the 20 women in Britain that mm. Christians mention. I mean, it looks like most of them are at Brooklands. I mean, I don't know. Is that is that? Um, know, we, we've got we've got three currently. So that's a large we, percentage we, of the 20. Yeah, mm. and then we had three 
the year before. We've had another three in the yeah. past. Um, and then we had one one before that, so I think we've had seven seven now we've yeah. had yeah. In, in my last Great. seven years. Yeah. And are you starting to see more inquiries from women? Yes, yeah, in? we are. And yeah. I said, you know, and I think where we are at Brooklyn's and we've got a lot of big glass fronted, a lot of the students in other courses and people walk past mm -hmm. and, are what, and, and look in. Um, a bit like the, yeah, and actually see yeah. see the students working and see yeah. the girls working and actually yeah. ask you know, questions. I mean, we've got a female in the carpentry and joinery this year. We've also got an electrician. You know, mm -hmm. and potentially we've got a couple more coming in in the other trades. You know, next year enrolled as well. The thing is, I think it's easy to forget as well just how important bricks are in construction. I mean, I know we always think of houses, but when you look at some of the architecture out there with some of the buildings it, that are iconic yeah. and the brickwork detail, I mean, it's just phenomenal to be honest. And um, I know there's a few amazing projects in recent years like the Tate Modern for instance, but you take Battersea Power Station, which yeah. is an iconic part of London and is being restored at the moment. I mean, all of that brickwork mm. had to be restored back to the original brick sizes and matching. And you know, this is a real skill. A it's real, real skill. art, yeah, isn't it? I mean, I, it I was up in London uh, the weekend and you know, went past St Pancras Station again, another iconic oh, building. It's my favourite building. Bricks. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. So you know, you know, to think of things like that, and it's the first thing you see. You know, you can have the best stuff inside. Yeah. But the first mm. thing that hits you is that. It's the facade. Mm -hmm. It's the mm -hmm. facade. Oh, it is. Yeah. I have to admit, I have been looking more at brickwork since coming down to Brooklyn. I'm sure people think I'm a bit strange <laughs> now, but you start to really you appreciate the, yeah. the time and the effort and the skill that's gone yeah, into that. definitely. And uh -huh. we want to keep those skills and keep those high-end skills yeah. and all the decorative stuff, you know, Brilliant. for the future mm. going forward. Well, as, as, I know, sorry, Dan, as I know Dan is very passionate about Lucas, you're obviously clearly very passionate about your job. So what do you like most about your job? Uh, seeing the students come in at the start, you know, not knowing, literally knowing which end of what, what tools are what. And, you know, over the two, three years, seeing them like, take part in competitions, seeing them build models, seeing them stand back and actually seeing them smile at the end of the day. You catch, their, you yeah. catch them as they're walking out, taking a picture yeah. and thinking, yeah, I, I've done that. And, Very and, satisfying. And yeah, that's what it's all about. And actually then when I go and visit them on site, to actually see them doing it for real, yeah. something that I've shown them, yeah. that's my job done. That's got to be really satisfying. Mm. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. And finally then, are there any sort of stories of students that stick in your mind or any, any key students that you can tell us where they are now and where they were when they came to you? Uh, there's one called Tyler Pierce. He currently works for Lee Marley Brickwork. He started, as a, he started on the multi-trade course, so our lowest course, and did English and maths along with uh, his course. A bit of brickwork, a bit of carpentry, a bit of tiling and all different things like that. Noticed him very good at the brickwork thing, so I asked him, to said, you should come to brickwork next year. He then's progressed all three through all three years of his apprenticeship, and he's now being trained to be a foreman, and actually, you know, look That's after men story. and projects mm -hmm. for them. Great. So it, he's come from somewhere that he wasn't quite sure. He knew construction or hands on. They wanted to do something. Yeah. To now he's got a clear vision. Yeah, it's and a really a good job. You know, yeah. he's 22 years old, and he's got a great career ahead of him. That's brilliant. Mm. Yeah, very and, satisfying. And he also won the Gilda Bricklayers National Final two years ago. Did he? As well as the Construction News Specialist Award Apprentice of the Year last now year. Now that's just showing off, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we do like a trophy. Now I need Tyler then to come round and help me with your peer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And Naomi and Charlotte as well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in and having a, a chat, Christian. It's been really interesting, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, brilliant, Christian. Yeah. Great to see it's the great, passion it's as great, well. It's great to promote, you know, and get more people into the industry. Yeah, it's all about the trades. Mm. That's the big mm. thing for me is you've got to start at the trade level and then it goes from there. And yeah. if people want to know a little bit more, they can come to an open day, can yeah, they? Yeah, we have, we have open events uh, and our college website. You know, we're at Weybridge and we've got another campus at Ashford in Surrey. Yeah, come along and ask questions and find out. Brilliant. Great. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Now, almost time for us to go, but I know you've got a couple of shout outs, have well, you? Well, certainly one here. Um, Which I, I think is quite relevant to today. It is. Uh, Bob No Cedar, Havering College. Um, great comments from Bob about the show and what we're doing here with the skill shortage. Um, he says, I think this is an amazing platform for addressing the issues we face in construction, along with the promotion of innovation. Attracting young people into construction trades has lost its way over recent years and there is a real need for career advice to be aligned to the industry and its needs. 
So a great comment there from yeah. Bob. So thank you for that, Bob. No, brilliant. Cheers. And anyone else that wants to send any comments in, please do get in touch. Danny, how can they do that? So it's about following us on our social media at Lucas UK Group. And of course, subscribing to the show. The subscribe button is always here. <laughs> um, and following us, sharing, giving us those comments and really sort of getting this out there because it's a, a great message. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.